This is the fifth video in the series on creating a JSON service using MySQL and Perl, both of which are frequently available on web hosts. Because the price is right, they're free. What we're going to focus on in this video, we already have a Perl script that's able to show data from a database. So we want something that looks like this. We want something that puts it in a proper JSON form. That's our eventual goal. Right now what we have is a script that just uh, spits the data out and it does so in a static way. It doesn't accept a parameter for the query. So those are two things we're going to do today. We're going to make sure that it puts the data out in the correct format and we're also going to add a parameter to the query. So first of all, what is the correct format for JSON? Well, what we'll see is that name value pairs are in curlies and then an array is in square brackets. So we're going to need to use a combination of these because if we have multiple items of the same type, for example, multiple plants, then we're going to want to put that in an array with square brackets. The attributes of that plant, the name, genus, species, common name, is going to be a name value pair, so we're going to want to put those in curlies. Now traditionally in JSON, we'll take that entire collection and surround it with curlies and give it a name. So let's take a look at our Perl script and let's continue to edit it. First of all, we no longer want, this is a simple Perl script, that was just a test line. Now before we start our while, we want to print the first part of our JSON. So we're going to say print, and then I'm going to say double quote, and then I'm going to say curly, and close curly, and terminate with a semicolon. And so that's going to start our JSON collection. At the end of the while loop, I'm going to say print, double quote, close curly, whoops, close curly, and terminate with a semicolon. So this kind of says these are the bookmarks, or the engine and the caboose of our JSON. Next, I'm going to say print, and we're going to say uh, plants. And the only trick is that plants we actually have to put in quotes, so we have to escape that character with a slash. So the slash is our way of saying, okay, I actually want to print a quote. Because in Perl, we're going to want to put everything in quotes. So if we actually want to print quotes, we have to use that, that slash, the slash above the enter key, to escape it out. So we're going to say plants, um, and then we're going to say tab. I'm sorry, we're going to say colon, okay, and terminate that with a semicolon. Okay, now I'm going to say print, and I'm going to do double quote, open square bracket, remove the closed square bracket, and again, um, terminate with a semicolon. Okay, uh, we need to close off that square bracket, so after the while loop, print, double quote, close square bracket, close double quote, semicolon. Now, I could combine these print statements into one line. I'm putting them on separate lines so we can clearly see what's happening. Opening the entire JSON collection, closing the entire JSON collection. Having a, a collection that we're calling plants, starting the collection with an open square bracket, close the collection with a closed square bracket. Uh, now, the other thing I'm going to do to make this a little bit more clear is I'm going to use the backslash n to give us a new line. Uh, that's perfectly legal. That doesn't count against our JSON. As a matter of fact, I'm going to use the backslash n at the end of this data uh, so that we can put each row, each plant on a new line. With Perl, because it is an interpreted and not a compiled language, it's important to check frequently, very frequently, uh, the status of our script. We want to change a few lines, and then we want to go back and refresh it and make sure that we have not messed anything up because we're not going to get compile errors. So we're going to need to just check frequently and then go back and manually inspect for errors. Okay, so I'm going to refresh. And what we see here is I have open curly, plants, and then colon, and then square bracket, and then my collection of plants, close square bracket, close curly. We're pretty close to where we need to be. We just need to format these plants properly. So for a plant, what we're going to do is we're going to put the entire concept of the plant in curlies, open curly, and finally, close curly. 
and save. Actually, in hindsight, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this backslash in for the moment. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are going to have a name, and then a colon, and then a value. So for the name, I'm gonna escape out a double quote, and I'm gonna say ID, escape another double quote. Whoops. So ID, escape another double quote. So that literally will print the double quote and then colon. So we know that uh, Ajax is, I'm sorry, JSON is going to be a name, a colon, and a value. In Perl, it's going to interpret this dollar sign ID as the result of the query that we've specified above. We made that in video four. If you need to go back and review, that's in video four. Okay, the, the only tricky thing is we have to escape out the quotes that we actually want to print. Okay, uh, so next, I'm going to say backslash double quote, and we're going to say common, backslash double quote, colon, and then common name and a comma, backslash double quote, genus, backslash double quote, colon, genus. And we probably ought to tighten up some of the spaces in here. Okay, finally, uh, a couple more to go. Backslash double quote, species backslash double quote, colon, and I know this one's going to be off screen just a little bit, but backslash double quote, cultivar, backslash double quote, colon. Okay, that's a lot of symbols, a lot of opportunities to make a mistake there. So definitely I want to save, I want to upload, and I want to check my results. Yep. Okay. And we go back. Ooh, not good. So that internal server error indicates I've made a mistake. So I'm going to go back and look very carefully, and it probably has something to do with a mismatched quote. And sure enough, this is off screen, but I notice now that I don't terminate this entire line with a double quote, which I should do. So I terminate it with a double quote, and let's try one more time. Hopefully that was the issue, but that's why I say we really have to check this frequently. Okay, refresh, still same error. Okay. I'll debug a little bit, and we'll find out what it is. And everything's fine. It ends up, it was a quick fix, but it ends up that when I put that terminating double quote, it actually put two double quotes in, so I fixed that now. Okay, we're starting to look pretty good. Now, here's a trick. We need to comma separate these plants. So we see that we have these plants, but they're jumbled together. Uh, we need to comma separate these plants. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to make a counter. I'm going to say my dollar sign count equals zero. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a comma and a new line after every line after the first. So I'll say here if uh, dollar sign counter, my counter variable from above, or I'm sorry, count greater than zero. Then we're going to say print, and we will say comma, backslash n, which is going to give us a new line, and then terminate with the semicolon. Uh, and then at the bottom of this loop, I'll give myself some new space, and I'm going to say count plus plus, which is going to add one to count. This is a bit of a goofy syntax, but what this is going to do, it's going to tack the comma and then new line at the end of the previous line. And just through the way that this works, it's going to add a comma and a new line after every line, except for the very last line. So let's save. And I should comment this. I'll comment this soon. And I'm going to upload view plans JSON. Okay. Let's take a look at the results. Uh-oh, internal server error. Let me go back one more time. Uh, my count equals zero. Just verify that's correct. Okay, if count is greater than zero, uh, we have open curly, we have print, uh, and then we have count plus plus, and so far that's all I've added. And it ends up I missed a dollar sign. So dollar sign count, save. So I say I stress we have to make small changes and check frequently. That's going to be our best bet. Upload, run again. And you see now things are looking a little bit better. If I control U, though, it's going to show me that I have 
an array called plants. I have my first item, and then I have my second item, and then I close the array, and then I close the entire JSON collection, and notice that I only have a comma after the first entry. I want to verify my JSON looks good, so I'm going to copy this by highlighting and control C. I'm going to go to the online JSON viewer, control V, and I'm going to hit viewer, invalid JSON variable. So it looks like I need to double check some of my values. And after a bit of looking, I realized that not only does the name need to be in double quotes, but so does the value. So I need to go back and edit my Perl script. It won't take too long, uh, but I have to do it anyway. So I'm going to, after each, uh, I'm going to copy this backslash double quote, and I need to paste that around each of my values that I'm getting back from the database to make sure that they are double quoted. It'll just take a second. And finally, cultivar, which is going to be just a little bit off screen. And save. And view plants JSON. And yes. And let's try it one more time. We're going to refresh. And you see now, give it a moment to refresh. Whoops. You see now, not only is the name in quotes, but the value is in quotes as well. Okay, now let's take this entire string copy, put it back in the JSON viewer, go to viewer, and we see now this makes a lot more sense. We see JSON, this is the entire enclosing curlies, then the plants array. I expand the plants array, we see plant number zero is my southern magnolia, magnolia grandiflora, cultivar blank. Plant number one, ID number four, magnus coneflower, echinacea, perforia, magnus. So you see how we can walk from the JSON collection to the array to each plant, and then we can look at the values of each plant just like looking at the values that we got back from our JSON query, but this jsonviewer.stack.hu uh, makes it a lot cleaner. So right now we have well-formatted JSON. I'm going to go ahead and terminate this video. Uh, after this, I'm going to make one more video that's going to show us how we can add a query here. We can say something like name equals AGN, and then we can actually make this so that we get data that is based on the query term that we've passed in. So that will be in our next video. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.